So uh, this first lecture, mapping and mobilizing multiple stakeholders for SDG linked partnerships in the territories. I would like to remind um, all the lectures are really very, very well explained in our module. So I will try to go to fly a little bit over this in order not to make it too long and let uh, the word to Janice, uh, who will also give us some insight on, on participation. So uh, first, when we talk about mapping, of course, I think this is a map, but um, if you do your own map, you might know the mind map methodology. You put your action in the center and see who is around you. This is actually what we call stakeholder map. So in decentralized cooperation, uh, it's important to be aware of all the actors that might be with us. Uh, so, of course, if we are local authority, um, this is a wonderful position to shine out and engage our communities, uh, to engage um, also um, the, the government, because we are government. So, of course, uh, the uh, national government uh, should be with us. We also um, have have specific platforms uh, that can help us to communicate where we can find projects. So this is, for example, Platforma is one uh, of these, but there's also uh, former in former days, my colleague mentioned the use platform and the uh, OEDP platform and the uh, culture platform. So these are three platform, our not network holds where you can find practices not only on decentralized cooperation, but for inspiration. International organizations, um, lo local and international, non-governmental organization, academic institutions. I think yesterday this came up very nicely, the importance and the new opportunity universities uh, give to us. And in particular, this is also really relevant, your own universities in the African cities. Then private sector, which is um, least but not at all last. And here we can say the private sector is ma more motivated than ever uh, to an international agenda because the SDG have been very adopted by large enterprises. They are doing compliance. They all want to be aligned with the SDG. So there's an important entrance point in particular on social and on environmental policies to get your, uh, your um, private stakeholders on board. And all these uh, stakeholders, the private stakeholders, uh, the uh, and, and non-governmental organization stakeholders, they are of course very present in the territory. So if we are um, looking in the next slide, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Here we have um, the, the, if we imagine this is only government sector in this slide. So um, that's a very specific point and if we, if we go back towards direct or indirect cooperation or also the educational cooperation, the typologies we were looking at in the first day, then uh, we can see that of course if a local government is engaged, we have much more state actors at our service. The local government association is at our service because they are they are uh, there for us, so for the cities, and so are we, UCLG, uh, which is uh, part of the international organizations in the, in the block um, ahead. If you have, for example, um, a territory at the right side, territory B, is working with territory A. So ideally, like yesterday, Cape Town and Delft, they engage their own stakeholders. So they engage their own association, they engage their own university, they engage their civil society. And the same is in Cape Town or when we saw Blantyre and Norfolk. So we, we see that as more actors are engaged, as richer is also the, the mirroring on the other side. So this is important because it is the opportunity of SDG 17 uh, 
and we need to really work with this methodology so to involve stakeholders since the beginning because as it is um as it is they are if, if they are stakeholders they need to be motivated they need to find their place and finally uh, to take a part of the project the national government and the provincial government are a little bit in the outer circle because of course they are um they may mainly give the frame you have a frame of policy making you have a frame of financing uh, you have a legal frame uh, but also national government often is an important uh, interlocutor or sometimes a controller of cooperation and also of decentralized cooperation so uh, it is important and at least to inform them because this decentralized cooperation even we of course want that national government is not necessarily controlling or looking or making this more complicated but informing them is always useful for example in malawi we remember when we had these uh, partnerships with the south africans the ministry of local government wanted all the time to be informed now even they don't give so much funding but they if they are informed they know the project and finally they can take inspiration in their own policy making and in their legislative framework i think uh, this is uh, always important to keep them informed and if we don't map them continuously we sometimes forget because a project has of course in the logical framework as you remember you then work to the indicators you want to achieve your your goals you want to uh, report on your achievements and you forget this uh, mass of stakeholders that are engaged and are wanting to be engaged next slide can you go yeah so this is just a list it's similar to what already was said but it's helpful because when we look at local and regional government and of course the state related actors here we have the keys because as we are government these are our inherent partners that sometimes they won't be so fast uh, our partners but they are much more our partner than an NGO and this is important because I think in in some African countries for example Angola we have countries where NGOs fulfill some of the services provide some public services and then do big big projects try also to engage in decentralized cooperation and do this with success but of course they don't have the the the, the mandate uh, they don't have the same key because they are not government. So it's very important that local and regional government uh, use use this uh, this their own sphere, their position uh, when they are doing decentralized cooperation. In particular, I would say in Africa, it's really very important. Sometimes in some countries in the north, you might have more civil society actors and local and regional government be a little bit um, back. But also in the northern countries, if local government is not involved, and that's why we, we insist so much in the need to do international policies and policies for decentralized cooperation, then also for the civil society is sometimes difficult leaders fall away or, or lose interest and then the continuity is difficult so minimum information and uh, the use the national the the local government and the councils uh, as important catal cat uh, catalysts um, is always useful on the other side, it is private sector. I already said private sector is, is a big opportunity. Nowadays, for example, a partnership between Barcelona and Maputo, which is 10 years old now. Uh, nowadays, the cities go both with their private sector. So private sector is really interested also in engaging in the projects of decentralized cooperation and of course, civil society and the academic sphere. I already said this. <clears throat> 